Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Nine Any Know It All podcast. I'm your host Josh, and just a minute, I'm going to be joined by Kelly, and we are going to go over our playoff predictions, kind of give a little thoughts on the different matchups. And wow, what a what a regular season it has been. I know that when the season first started, a lot of people were out there saying, "There's no way baseball is going to be able to do it. No way they're going to make it through the whole season." And yet, here we are. 60 games complete for most every team. I think three teams didn't play a full 60, 60 game schedule, but their their standings didn't make a difference one way or the other. And so here we are. We are here at the end of the season. Playoffs are about to start, and I'm pumped for it. I'm pumped to talk some playoff baseball. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right into our playoff thoughts. First of all, Kelly, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk some playoff uh, postseason baseball. I don't know if anyone, if we actually thought we were going to get to this point back in July. So it's kind of exciting that we made it through a 60 game season. Yeah, I know. I mean, there was lots of times we we would see the the thought that baseball might come back, and then something <clears> would happen or delayed, or the, just all the interaction between the owners and the players was so negative and now here we are I mean I've almost completely forgotten about that which says a lot because I know we were all pretty heated but here we are we're ready for the playoffs I mean yeah back in July you, you, the question of a season you didn't know about it but to think they were going to get through a 60 game season with the COVID I don't know if anyone actually thought it and I think I think two teams ended up playing 59 games and one team played 58 and the other 27 all played their their 60 game seasons and and then the Marlins and the Cardinals um, had their uh, issues with the COVID at some point but both of them were able to, to fit the whole season and you know lots of double headers and stuff like that but they they got their season and and both of them ended up making the playoffs too. Yeah and I know at some point we'll probably do a 2020 se- or season recap talk about some of the different rule changes because there's some that work some that didn't and some stuff that just uh you know kind of needs to be talked about and addressed but that's not for tonight tonight we're talking about yeah. playoff predictions so let's start in the american mm-hmm. league and right off the bat the number one seed tampa bay rays takes on the toronto blue jays and i'll be honest at the start of the season that someone said hey your number one team in the american league was tampa bay i i would not have believed them i, I know that tampa bay is good they're 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 probably the most underrated team in, in all of baseball, but I didn't think they'd be the top American League team, but here they are, and and this is going to be a fun matchup, in my opinion. Kelly, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Yeah, I mean, I think the Jays are got to the playoffs probably a year or two earlier than most people thought thought they would get there. You know, we know they're coming, and they got uh, Bichette and Guerrero and, and some of those other guys. They, the pitching staff quite isn't there, but I don't think anyone had them – I mean, I didn't think they'd probably make the playoffs at, at, at the beginning of the year. I mean, granted, it's that eighth spot, so it, they needed those extra teams in. So, But, um, you know, like you said, the Rays, it is a surprise. I, I don't think it's that big of a surprise. Maybe surprised that they are the best team in the American League. But, you know, this is what they've done the last. I think they've made the playoffs six times now. Um, and they always seem to be there. But four, they went 40 and 20, you know, best second best record in all of baseball. And, you know, I, I have them advancing on to the next round. Yeah, I, I have them winning this series as well. Like you said, Toronto has got some great young talent, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. I don't think they're ready for it yet. And Tampa Bay, they really are – I mean, look at their farm system. They're still stacked. I mean, just like the Dodgers. Yeah. They're winning, and they have a farm system. They're going to be dangerous for a long time. Yeah, they will be. And they're, they're not like, – they don't have a ton of, like, big-time stars, and it could be because they're a small market. But when you when you, if you just sit there and think about this, probably going to really name maybe five or six players on the team because they just don't have these these big stars. Yeah, I think I can ma- maybe name three of them, maybe four, but that'd be about it. And because I just you don't hear about them much. Yeah. So good. Good. And you know, you love to see that the the small market teams make it and come in as a number one seed. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and they are definitely a force to be reckoned with when it comes to being a World Series contender. But let's move on to the next matchup. This one, I think, is going to be the most intriguing. The Cleveland Indians take on the New York Yankees. And obviously, there was a lot of, you know, bouncing around. The Yankees could have been, I think, as far down as, like, seventh and stuff like that. So, kind of crazy. But Cleveland and New York, this is going to be this is going to be a power fest, in my opinion. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Who do you got? 
You know, um, I think this may have been the toughest series, one of two series to call. Um, Bieber and Cole in game one. I mean, talk about – that's that's got to be the best matchup in the entire round for all eight series. You know, um, I went back and forth. I really think whoever wins game one is going gonna, is gonna to win it. Um, but the Indians have such a good rotation, but their downfall at the beginning – of the season, the first half of the season was their offense, but um, Jose Ramirez has come around. He's a an, an uh, MVP candidate. Um, I actually have the Yankees moving on in this one, but it was one that I could I could probably change before my post goes out tomorrow morning. So, but I actually have the Yankees advancing because after Bieber, the uh, Indians have a great rotation, but if their offense stalls, then they could be in trouble. Yeah, and that's one of those things where I, I too, I think there's there's one series in the American League, one in the National League that I really am still going back and forth with. But for me, I'm going Cleveland simply because it's in Cleveland, and that's really the only difference I have. I think I think either team could do it. I think just the fact that the Indians get to play at home, even though there's no fans, it still is a little bit nicer sleeping in your own bed type of thing. I think that's the only advantage I have for them in this. And like you said, I, I could see it going either way. I think I'll just pick Cleveland just because. Yeah, I, I've gone back and forth. Like I said, my, my post goes out tomorrow morning where I have all the wild card teams doing. And right now it says Yankees advance. But it could definitely change depending on how much I think about it in the next few hours. So, Yeah, and that game one matchup is going to be one for the ages. I think that I, I would not be surprised if it's a one nothing ball game in game one because it's just going to be, you know, Cole is – Cole and, and Bieber has been – well, he won the MLB, you know, triple crown for pitchers, which I don't think that's been done for, for decades. I think it was 2006 was the last time that was happening, but you're still thinking that's 15, 14 years ago. And well, I think um, that, I mean, that, was, I think, that was just one league. I, I think MLB is even longer. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. I know that Kershaw won it, I believe, one year – I don't know. I, I'd, I'd have to look into that because that, that actually has my curiosity. But the one thing you have to think about, too, is that um, Sanchez, who's been struggling for the Yankees, he hasn't caught in Cole in a while. And, and Cole's pitched a lot better when he that Sanchez hasn't caught him. So that could be interesting. Are they going to put Sanchez in Atlanta? Because obviously he has the better bat, even though he's been struggling this year. And so it'll be – I'm not sure what um, Boone's going to do there. Yeah, I think it's really up to Cole, to be honest. I think if Cole says I need my catcher, then I think you got to go yeah. with it because Cole can do it. But let's move on to the next one. This one is going to be an interesting matchup. The Minnesota Twins versus the Houston Astros. And let's be honest, I think all of America has just become Twins fans because they want the Astros to lose. And honestly, I don't think the Astros really – compared to the Twins. I, I just don't. I don't think that this year they compare. Had you asked me a couple years back before all this stuff, I would have said Astros in a heartbeat, but I think it's the Twins to, to lose. Um, like, you're you're talking to a Dodgers fan here. Like, who do you think I'm going to pick? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, the Astros are 29 and 31 this year. I mean, that, that just – I love it. I'm sorry I do. And I'm not sugarcoating at all. The Twins are my second favorite team in the postseason, in, in the wild card round this year. I mean, I don't have to say it. Like, when I tweet out or when I write my article, I won't I won't even mention the Astros' name. I refuse to put so much, give them extra uh, media and stuff. You know, I won't even type their name down. Like, it just – it makes me sick to my stomach. So, yeah, I, I have the Twins advancing. And I love the fact that the – I believe the game one star starter is a – former Dodger from the 2017 yep. team, and I hope he goes out and just throws a perfect game. I honestly do. I think it would be so much fun to see. Yep. Kent Maeda is starting game one. I just saw that. Kent Maeda is starting game one. You know he's got to – he'll be doing that for Dodger Nation just as much as he's doing it for the Twins. Absolutely. And then on to the final American League wild card round series. And this one, I'll be honest, this one – is going to be insane as well. The Oakland A's, which is very quiet, unheard of team. I, I don't think I could name a handful of guys on their team versus the Chicago White Sox. And I know the White Sox have struggled with the last 10 games. They're one and nine going into the playoffs, but they still have two MVP candidates. I mean, they are 
they are a, a team to be reckoned with, and this could be a fun series as well. Yeah, I mean, two weeks ago, I believe they had a shot. At, they were the, in the number one seed for a few days in the American League, and they just they just lost it. I mean, I, I talked to Mike Carter a bunch, who writes a bunch for us for Nine Inning Know It All a few times. I've talked to him, and it's just it just blows my mind. Like they got a really tough draw. A's are kind of like the race. You know, small market, not a ton of superstars on their team. I, mean, I, I can list off, you know, 10, 15, 20 White Sox right now. I can't do that for the A's. Um, and I just think they – but also, though, the Sox, you know, they struggled last year. You know, we know they're coming, but you wouldn't have thought they were going to be at a spot where they had the number one overall spot in the American League, and they ended up falling down to the seventh spot in – they, they could shock some people there. I just think the A's are probably going to win. That's who I, I pick was the A's. Um, the, the White Sox are pl- kind of playing with house money this year. Yeah, and, and I, I, for this series, I actually chose the White Sox for no other reason than this is a, a three-game series, and if their bats get hot, I mean, anyone, I mean, three-game series. You know, you and I talked about it earlier today. You know, every, others have talked about it. Three-game series – is no favorite to the top seeds. This is not a good thing for them because you can come in and get hot for two games and you move on. And so it's dangerous. I think the A's are definitely the better team. I think the White Sox are just the scarier of the two teams, though. Yeah, I mean, if Jolito comes in and throws a gem, you know, I would imagine he's probably going game one. I, I couldn't tell you who's going game one for the A's. So it'll, it will be interesting that that first game if Jolito can – can throw a gem and, and get him up 1-0 early. Yeah, absolutely. And then, okay, so, so for you, Kelly, in the overall, looking at the American League, which team do you see as your favorite coming out and, and winning the American League championship? Coming out of it? Oh, man. You know, I think it could be – I really do think it could be – the Rays, the number one. I know, like, you're thinking, oh, the big, big surprise, right? They were the number one seed. But I think the Rays are probably will come out. Um, if I had to pick someone that you're not – maybe one of the lower seeds, maybe the Indians can kind of pull what the um, Nationals did last year because they have such a good rotation. The only difference is that in the divisional series and in the championship series, there's no days off. So you can't throw those pitchers back to back to back, right? You know, um, Beaver will get probably two starts, maybe a third start possibly if it goes to game seven. But it's a lot tougher because actually there's no way he'll get three starts in, in, if they're playing seven games in a row. And so um, probably the, I think the Rays, Rays maybe the, the Indians, if, they were, if I had to pick a wild, wild card, wild horse. Yeah, I know for me, you know, every time I did the matchups and I went through a couple variations saying, well, if this team won this, and every time the Rays were my favorite. And I think Minnesota – might have a chance, but even then, I don't think they're as deep as they need to be to do this. So I really do. I think this is Tampa Bay's chance to make the World Series, and honestly, I'm kind of hoping they do. I think they'd be a team that you know they they no one hears about them, no one knows about them. They're going to be the underdog, even though they might be one of the best teams in all of baseball. I mean, for sure, definitely. And like I was telling you, like I told you that the Yankees were going to be the Indians, and then I told you the Indians might be the wild card that comes out of the, of the American League. So see what I'm saying? I'm already kind of changing my mind. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's just that three-game series is just anything could happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I think that it's not fair to the one seed that they have to play in a three-game series. And I'll get to more of that when we start talking about the Dodgers because I get really hot about it. But it's just not fair to the Rays. Best team in, in the American League, and they have to play a three-game series. It just – I don't like that. No, it doesn't. But speaking of the Dodgers, let's jump to the National League. And the number one seed is the Los Angeles Dodgers versus the Milwaukee Brewers. And this was actually – you know, I, I think this actually played out as best as could be for the Dodgers because there were some other possibilities – that I think would have been very scary. The Reds could have fallen to eight and a few other teams. I think this is the best outcome, really. But once again, it's still a three-game series. But, Kelly, you know, what are your thoughts on the Dodgers-Brewers? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously the Dodgers, I'm going to pick the Dodgers to win. But in a three-game series, once again, it's not fair that these number one seeds, they go 43-17. and 17. 
and they got to play a three-game series against a 29-31 and 31 team where anything can happen. And you look at the Dodgers this year, they lost one series all year long. They lost one series, I think, to the Rockies. And to the Rockies who didn't make the playoffs, so it can happen. I mean, they got to – I think that if the Brewers are going to beat the Dodgers, they have to go up early, and they're going to ride Devin Williams and Josh Hader in those two games or three games. That's what's going to happen. That's going to be the Brewers' best chance. If they can get up early on the Dodgers in the first few innings, and that's their best chance. Yeah, it really is. And it's one of the things where, you know, the Brewers are going to have to throw everything they have at the Dodgers, which means if they do somehow win, going to the next series, they're going to have used up a lot of their stuff and, and their arms and their innings. And, yes, they can still put guys out there, but, you know, it, it is going to take a little bit of a toll. I, I do think the Dodgers are the favorite. I mean, obviously, they're the best record in baseball. And like I said, I think this matchup may have been the best case scenario because, um, you know, obviously you don't necessarily want to play the Giants just because rivalries, you never know what could happen. You don't want the Reds to fall down to eight with their pitching staff. Uh, it's just it, the Brewers have struggled enough where I, I think this gives the Dodgers a fair chance to, of moving on. And, you know, we'll have to see. You know, it's, once again, three-game series, I mean, it's almost like a game seven every single time. Yeah, I mean, going into, this, going into this morning, the Dodgers could have played the Brewers, the Cardinals, or the Giants or Phillies in, in, as the eighth seed. All four of those teams had a chance in eighth seed. The Reds, and the Reds were there up until yesterday. They locked in either the seventh spot or the, the fifth spot, um, the second spot in the central. So as of this morning, there was four teams that could have played. And I was kind of rooting for – for the Brewers, to tell you truthfully, you know, um, the Giants, for some reason, we struggle against them. You know, it's just the rivals. Anything could happen. You know, Phillies have Bryce Harper, and they have a really potent offense. So I'm glad that we landed with the Brewers, but I'm still it still worries me. Three-game series worries me. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on to the next series, the San Diego Padres, the four seed, take on the St. Louis Cardinals. And this is going to be interesting. I mean, my pick right off the bat, I, I think the Padres are one of the more exciting teams to watch in all of baseball. They're young, they're talented, and honestly, I don't think the Cardinals are – I just don't think they're as strong as they need to be in order to beat, you know, any of the top teams right now in the playoffs. And once again, three-game series, anything can happen. But I've got the Padres getting hot and doing what they have to do to move on and, and good for the Padres nation. Yeah, I mean, um, Tatis was really cold for a while, and he started to heat up these last three games, so that that's great. Um, the thing that made it – I have the Padres advancing too, but the thing that made it closer or made it a tougher decision is that we don't – you don't know – I've not heard anything on Clevenger and Lament, and those were going to be their one and two game starters. And I know they have Davies who's done a really good job this year, and they have a couple other pitchers, but they were hanging – I mean, they, they made that deal for Clevenger for the playoffs, right? to be able to get past all the teams. And I don't know if he's – he might not be ready for the wild card round. And I know Lament got hurt a couple of days ago, and I heard, haven't heard anything about him. So I don't know if they're going to have him. So that's why I made it. I still have them advancing, but it made it a tougher dis- decision to pick them. Yeah, that's one of those things where I, I have them moving past the first round, but I don't have them going any farther, even though I think the Padres-Dodgers series would be a lot of fun. Let's jump down to the next series, and this one is going to be another interesting one, the Chicago Cubs versus the Miami Marlins. And this is one of those series that I, I'm going to lean towards the Cubs because it's in Chicago, because they really are a more established team. But a part of me really, really wants to pick Miami. I really want to pick Miami. I, I just – don't know if I can pull the trigger and do that. Yeah, I mean, um, the Cubs, a new manager this year was David Ross. I don't think anyone really thought they were going to win the Central. They, they ended up doing it. Um, the Marlins, you know, they had – they lost so many of their players at the be- towards the first week or two of the season because of COVID. Ended up coming back 31-29. and 29. They ended up playing all their games. They haven't lost. They've never lost a postseason matchup. They've been in the postseason twice in their history, and they've won the World Series both those years. And 
one of the teams they knocked out in the last time was was Chicago, and we all know that that Bartman play happened. So they, that that's kind of a fun rematch there. But I do have have the Cubs advancing. Yeah, and you know, and that's one of the things. You know, looking at the Cubs, you know, you Darvish is obviously one of the best pitchers in the National League. He just is. He he's so intelligent and so crazy how many pitches he has. So I, I give it to Cubs, but at the same time, that Miami team, you know, when Jeter first took over and we were seeing all the different moves they were doing and everybody's kind of like, oh, man, he's going to kill the Marlins. And, and here they are in the sixth seed. I mean, it's – they're going to be a team that competes, I think. I think they have a future, and that's, that's fun to see. Even though baseball in Florida isn't the most fan-friendly because, I mean, the Marlins don't have a lot of fans – the Rays don't have a lot of fans, but it's fun to see both these teams in the playoffs and competing. Yeah, well, and then today Urania took a took a ball off his forearm and broke it, and I think he was probably going to be their number three starter. And uh, Sterling Marte took a got hit in the head with a pitch uh, right off the bill of his cap, and so I'm not sure he'll be ready in time either. So I mean, those are a couple um, injuries that are significant for them. Yeah, it is. And then on to the last series of the National League. And this one, I'm telling you folks, is giving me fits. I am having troubles. It's the Atlanta Braves versus the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds have a starting three that is just going to be hard to compete against. The Braves have an amazing offense, but they're a little banged up. So even though the Braves are the two seed, I'm, I'm, I think I'm picking Cincinnati. I think I'm leaning that way because their pitching is just – it's dominant. Yeah, I have this as the most exciting series out of the the eight series, just for like what you said. As a Dodgers fan, I was sweating bullets the last week. I was just gonna throw a fit if they ended up in that eighth spot and they and Dodgers had to face them with Bauer and Castilla and Gray. I mean, so I'm glad that they're in that seven that seventh spot. And I have this is tough. Like I, I know like I know the popular pick. The popular pick at the beginning of the season was the Reds to win the, the Central. And they just struggled for, you know, six weeks and really turned it on this last two weeks. Um, I don't – I had the Braves winning a really close series. They got knocked out by the Cardinals last year, which was a huge surprise to everyone. But I don't think that they're going to let that happen again. It's because they're offense. I mean, they have Freeman and Azuna and Acuna, who are all probably top six MVP votes in the National League. And their, and their rotation isn't that bad either. I mean, I'm, I know Fry's an issue. I'm not sure if he, where he's at. But I do have the Braves in a really close series. But the Reds are coming. The Reds are coming, and they're, they're young. It'll be really, really interesting to see if Bauer sticks with them in the offseason because he's going to look for a big contract, I think. I know they're going to gun for him. Yeah, you know, like I said, the Atlanta offense, even throwing Albies, who's been back and started to hit well, yeah. they are – they are deep, they're talented, and it's just – this might be the best and the most difficult matchup, I think, in the playoffs for – especially the first round. Second round, obviously, you know, things change, like depending on who wins, who loses, that type of stuff. But I, I really think that this will be something I'm going to pay attention to, really try and watch, because I, I think this could be – I think the team that wins that one will probably go on to the NLCS – and I, I personally have the Dodgers there. So I think that's what we're kind of looking at. That that 2-7 matchup might end up facing the Dodgers in the NLCS. And I think that's going to be a series and a half as well. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just going to say, I think whoever wins that 2-7 matchup will beat whoever wins the Cubs-Marlins matchup. So, yeah, I think the Reds or the Braves, will pro, one of those teams will be in, in the NLCS. I was, I was just thinking that as you said that. So that, that was a good call. Yeah, I know for me, like I said, I've got the Dodgers probably, you know, I have Cincinnati winning, but at the same time, if the Braves win, I wouldn't be shocked and be, oh, my gosh, what happened? But I still think this is the year for the Dodgers, once again, to make the World Series. It's their year. It's their chance to do it. They got bets for this run. They've got their starting pitching lined up. Their offense is, well, I mean, it's, it's honestly stacked, one through nine pretty much. So, I mean, they've got the things to do it. I actually – my pick for the World Series to play is Dodgers and Rays. I think that would be a fun series seeing two teams, the team that is really the big flashy, everybody knows the team, everybody knows all the players versus this small market, nobody knows anybody on the team. I think that would be a fun matchup. 
Yeah, I do, I do think I think so too. And you know, it, it does give me goosebumps when I hear the other other people pick the Dodgers to to get there. Um, obviously, as a Dodgers fan, I'm gonna pick them. You know, um, I hate I hate being a homer sometimes, but you know, it it is what it is. I do think the Dodgers are the best team. Well, they are the best team. I mean, it's without a doubt they are the best team in in baseball. Forty three and seventeen. The Rays were the next best at forty and twenty. And like I mentioned earlier, um, in the divisional series, in that championship series, there are no days off. You know, in a five-game series, they are going to play five straight games if it gets there. In a seven-game series, they're playing seven straight, straight games if it gets there. And the team that's going to get there or going to win those series are the team that has the most depth. And without a doubt, that's the Dodgers. The Dodgers have the most, most depth in baseball. Yeah, th- they that's, do. Th- that starting rotation, yeah. off the bench, everything. Yeah. That's not a Dodgers fan saying that. I I am a Dodgers fan, but I am also a baseball fan. And if I thought someone was better, I would say it. I was scared of the Nationals last year in the divisional series. They worried me with Strasburg and Scherzer and Corbin. They worried me. I still thought the Dodgers were going to win, but they really worried me in a short five-game series. And I think it happened. And it did happen. And it did happen. Yeah, it is. So – Kelly, moving on, obviously, you know, we have the playoffs going on. We have some, you know, end of the season, some awards to even talk about really quickly. So let's let's first talk about the Cy Young Awards in the American League and the National League. I think the American League is a done deal. I think if Bieber doesn't win it flat out, hands down, with a runaway, there's something seriously wrong because he deserves the, the Cy Young in the American League. Yeah, he's, he's unanimous. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, there's even people saying that he should get – he could be the MVP – um, and I don't, I, I disagree with that just because he only had 12 starts and that, that's really tough. Um, but he, he is hands down the American League Cy Young. So jumping to the National League, who do you have as your National League Cy Young award winner? I have Darvish. I, I picked Darvish. And that was another close one too, because Darvish and Bauer, um, and I know there was a few other guys in there. Um, I, I, I think I had Kershaw in the top five just because he, a 2.12 ERA, you know, I think he had six wins. Um, Lamette for the the Padres is, is in there, um, but I ha- I have Darvish Darvish winning a, a, like narrowly over Bauer. Yeah, and you know it is a short season. You know, guys can get hot, but at the same time, I my decision making did kind of, kind of come down to the same thing: Bauer versus Darvish, and I chose Bauer just because I, I don't know. I, I just think that his influence as a starting pitcher impacted the Reds and and his numbers obviously support it but you know what I'll be honest they're just like the MVP races we'll talk about in a minute there's a couple guys that if they win I'd be like oh yeah yeah no doubt about it that's that's a good pick but I think Bauer is the one I would go with but if someone told me Darvish was their pick like you did uh, I couldn't argue against it either yeah, you know, and, and that's how it is. A six, 60 games, and it was a swing, like one bad start to change it. Like, I thought Max uh, Fried, Fried for the Braves was probably going to be top, and then he ended up, I think he pitched his last time, and he just threw one inning and ended up getting, getting um, hurt. And so he could have been there too. And it's just in a short season, one start makes such a huge difference. Yeah, it does. And then let's jump to the MVP race, obviously – there's been a lot of candidates in both leagues. American League MVP, who do you got? Um, I think that the AL was a little bit easier than the NL. In the AL, I had Jose Abreu over Jose Ramirez. Um, and I think I even – I had Mike Trout third, I believe. And it's crazy to me because, like, no one's talking about Mike Trout. But if you look at his numbers, they're just – they're right there. I mean, that's every single year. You know, the problem is, is that he doesn't sniff the playoffs. And so, um, Nelson yep. Cruz got some votes, get some votes. Um, even Tim Anderson will get some votes. It was tough. It was tough. But I got, I had Jose Abreu over Ramirez. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Abreu is mine as well. Trout, if he would have been on a playoff team, I think probably would have won the, the MVP again. But his team, and we'll talk about this probably in the offseason, how Mike Trout, his career is being wasted. That will be a topic for some time in, in November or December. It just, it's sad. But let's jump to the National League. And once again, this, this National League MVP race is packed. Who is your pick? Yeah, th- this, was, this was tough for me. And just because I watched 
probably 50 of the Dodger games this year, and I saw what he does firsthand. I had Mookie Betts. But Freddie Freeman, Ozuna, uh, Juan Soto, Trey Turner, and I'm sure there's other ones that I'm not even thinking of because I'm not looking at my ballot right now. But I had, I had Mookie Betts. Just what he does in the box, in the field, running the – one of the best base runners I've ever seen. But, I, I, you know, I got to watch almost all their games this year. And he is just – he is the game changer. He is a game changer. So I, I have Mookie Betts, and I, I had Mookie Betts over Freddie Freeman, who was my second pick. Yeah, and of course, you're throwing with the Padres. You got Machado. You got Tatis. Yeah. I mean, you just have – it is it, – it was a fun 60 games for the National League. My pick, personally, is Freeman. Um, I just think that, you know, I think although his numbers – He's not the number one person in each spot. He actually has a teammate who is the number one in a couple of those spots. I, I like Freeman. I just think Freeman uh, was big time. But at the same time, like you said, Betts, I mean, Machado, any one of those guys. If someone said, yeah. hey, that's my vote, I'd be like, that's a good vote. That's a good pick. I, I don't know how else to say It's not like in past years where someone would say a name and you're kind of like, how can you even consider that person? He doesn't match up. But all these guys, they all matched up. And the fact that – Teams didn't get to play across divisions, that there's no East versus West or, or Central like that. It's hard to tell because you don't know how is the pitching better in one, is not in the other. But at the same time, it, it's just – it's it's a tough call. I think Freeman is mine. But once again, I think Betts – I think Betts might end up getting it in, in the real vote. Yeah. And this is what we talked about earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if you see, like, between eight to ten guys get first-place votes. Because all these guys, and they're not – everyone that's in, in the West is seeing all the West team plays, and they're not really seeing the Central and the East, right? And I didn't even mention, like, Machado and Tatis because up until three weeks ago, Tatis was a runaway, and he struggled a lot. And but and I think I had much, Machado three after Freeman. And I think there's no chance, no doubt in my mind that Tatis will not – he will win an MVP award at some point. He's 21 years old. He will win. He's the most exciting player in baseball. He will win it, but he just struggled so badly at a really important time when the Padres were trying to chase down the Dodgers and struggled really badly against the Dodgers that I think I had him like on my on my ballot around six maybe. Yeah, and that's one of those things where if this is a full season and he has that little stretch where he's down and then he picks it back up, he's once again the runaway MVP. But being a short season, you have a 10-game slump. I mean – yeah, you had a 50 games, so you were great, but those 10 games dropped you down so bad that it's rough. And it's, it's one of the things that you have to look at someone and see how consistent they are all 60 games. And Betts and Freeman, you know, they really did kind of stand out from that. Yeah. Well, if you even go back last year, like, Bellinger did have a, a rough September, but his first five months of the season were so great. And once Jelic got hurt, that he was, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. It's, it's a bigger sample size because he was the number one guy for five months, and then he struggled in September a little bit, and it made those other guys come back, get closer to him until Yelich got hurt. In a short season, you can't you can't afford to have that that stretch. Yeah, it, yeah, it's true. And full season, and like you said, Tatis is going to win MVPs in his career. I honestly, if I had to guess a number, I would say two, maybe even three. I would not be surprised if he won three MVPs in his career because he can just do so much. And he's, I don't know, he is, I'm excited for the future of baseball. I am. The the youth of this game is so amazing. I'm excited for the future. Yeah, I mean, he did so good. That he made you forget about like Ronald Acuna and Juan Soto for a few weeks, who were the, those types of players the last couple of years. The National League is just – they're stacked with young, young players, and they're going to be so good for so long, these players. And it's just it's just fun to watch. It is. It is It is a great time to be a baseball fan as long as it doesn't get ruined by a certain individual at the very top. But once again, that's another topic at another time. But I, I love it. I love it. I'm excited for the playoffs. I mean – a lot of people didn't think we'd get here. A lot of people were out there doubting and, and bashing Major League Baseball for even trying to play. And yet here we are. The season's complete. Playoffs are starting. And I, I'm, I'm pumped for it. I'm so glad that we made it. It just, it just angers me because if, they, if they, the, those two sides could have figured it out earlier, we could have – this is what we talked about earlier. We could have had Major League Baseball on July 4th, and the players could have had 20 extra – 20, 21 extra games – 
in which would have given us half a season, you know, and it just imagine being able to have 20 more games to figure out these races and these divisions and that all these award voting. I mean, that's a huge, that's a third more games, you know, could we go from 60 to 80. I mean, it's just, it's just so frustrating. They could not figure out, figure it out at the end of June to make sure that these players could have been playing on July 4th. I will, this is something that I'll probably never, ever forget. Yeah, and that's one of those things where, once again, the impact it could have had on the nation in terms of baseball fandom and growing the game, it could have been – I mean, yes, baseball was there by itself for a short time, kind of, but it had the chance to really step out. And once again, we'll save a lot of these topics for the off season because we have a ton of things to talk about, but it just – there was a chance for more, and they missed it. Everybody missed it. Yeah. Yeah, they did. I mean, I'm thankful for what we got. Don't get me wrong. I probably watched more baseball this this year because I had the time. And I, you don't know when the next game is going to be. Like, we don't know what's going to happen next spring. We don't know what's going to happen. So I watched. I literally I watched as much. I watched almost every Dodger game I could. And when they weren't playing, when I was home, I was turning on just any games I wanted just to have it in the background when I was doing other stuff around the house, just so I can hear hear baseball because we don't know what's coming in March. We don't that's, know what's going to be happening then. Yeah, and that's one reason why even I watch baseball more because I normally don't watch Major League Baseball. But this year, I, mean, I was catching Padres games every chance they were on ESPN Plus and and Twins games. It was it was fun. I enjoyed it, and it kind of really stoked my fire for being a, a baseball fan at the Major League level once again. So I'm excited for that. But guys, that's our playoff predictions. That's our thoughts on the Cy Young and the MVP and. What a season. It's come to a conclusion. Kelly, what is your one big takeaway from this season that you're you're excited about, that you saw, that you just want to think about? Um, that, and I was talking to my daughters about this the other day. For me, is that I'll be in my 50s when Mookie Betts' contract is up with the Dodgers. I get 13 years of watching him play. I get, I get to watch him for the next 13 years. He is the, one of the most exciting players that I've ever got to watch on my team. He's on my team. I've always been a fan of him. We got to, I got his autograph back in fall ball in 2013 when he wasn't even a top 30 prospect with the Red Sox. And now he's on my team, and I get to watch him for the next 13 years, and I'll be in my early 50s when his contract's up. I know my big takeaway from this year, being a Mariner fan, is they've got some dudes. they got some dudes that are going to compete. And I, I don't want to say this because I'm going to jinx it. I'm actually <laughs> excited to be a Mariner fan for the first time in 19 years, but I kind of am. I'm kind of back on the fence. Yeah, I mean, hey, Dodgers are going to win back-to-back in 2021, and the Mariners got 2022. I'll give them that. Uh, we'll, we'll take that. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> Absolutely. Kelnick, Kelnick, Rodriguez, Lewis in the outfield. They're going to get – Marco's had an unbelievable year, and they're probably going to have to sign a couple off pitchers in the next couple off seasons. But, yeah, 2022, I'll give, I'll give it to the Mariners. Mariner fans will take it. Well, Kelly, thank you so yeah. much for joining me tonight. I, I enjoy talking playoff baseball, and, man, I, I'm just glad we got here. Me too. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we're calling it a podcast. Thank you so much for listening. That's our playoff thoughts. Tell us, let's, let us know who you got. Go to Twitter, send us a message, send us a tweet, who you got to win the, each division series and, and wild card series, and, and let's see how we stack up and who's got the best guesses. But, guys, until then, yep. baseball's here, playoffs are here. Let's have some fun and watch it. Talk to you guys later. Let's go.